Hello guys, uh, welcome to uh, Security Red versus Blue Team channel. So in this video, we discuss mainly on uh, Nasus tool, so Nasus vulnerability scanner. So uh, so when it comes to Nasus, uh, before going to the details, so we we just discuss about like why do we need Nasus? So in Nasus, uh, mainly uh, we can perform two uh, two kinds of scans. Uh, one is uh, Nasus vulnerability scanning and uh, Nasus compliance audit scanning. So in this Nasus vulnerability scan, we usually find out the vulnerabilities that was already disclosed in the past. Let's say um, if you have installed a software like one month before, and if there is any new vulnerability has arrived in the in this last thirty days, and and these kind of, these vulnerabilities which has arrived in the last thirty days will not be um, able to uh, get uh, through the scan report. So uh, so basically, the Nasus is used to find out only the the known vulnerabilities that has been disclosed in the past. So let's get into the details. Um, so in this video, we are not uh, showing on like how to install the Nasus and all. So we'll just uh, jump on to uh, how to scan uh, using Nasus. <clears throat> okay. So the, uh, I just logged into the Nasus. So uh, in, in Nasus scan, um, so as we discussed, like we will be doing uh, Nasus vulnerability scanning uh, in this video. So uh, before performing any scan, uh, we need to we need to first establish the policy. So uh, in, in any organization, uh, each organization will be having its own set of uh, the policies or controls. So based on that, we need to define the policy. So now uh, I'm just going into the policy section. So inside the policy, uh, let's go to the new policy. So in the new policy, um, so usually uh, the NASIS comes with uh, by default um, many policies if you look at it uh, we have host discovery scan it is like when we pass multiple ips so it will just discover whether the the host is like linux machine or parrot voice or windows machine or any other kali machine or uh, anything else so similarly for vulnerabilities we have like basic scan base, uh, advanced scan and malware scan and mobile detection scan and um and like uh, we have like for, for particular cba we have like uh, log 4j or log 4j remote code execution scan so we can like we have like multiple policies to uh, to work on multiple areas uh, similarly we have like um, uh, the compliance scan compliance audit scan so this will be covered in the uh, the later part in the new video so now let's get into uh, the vulnerability scan so in the vulnerability scan the most popular one that will be used on the regular basis will be the advanced scan as it uh, comprises of uh, many of the um, important details, which will be covered in most of the uh, individual scans that is mentioned here. So I'm just uh, clicking on advanced scan. So in this advanced scan, I will just mention uh, some name of the scan and the description. Then we'll go to the discovery tab. So in this discovery tab, we are not uh, modifying any of the default parameters that is being already uh, tick marked or enabled. So in the general setting, we can see the test the lo local NASUS host. So that is one thing, and we have like uh, um, the, the ping methods, which could be ARP, TCP, or ICMP, and then we have fragile diseases uh, devices, uh, where it could be a printer or any other machine which is there in the local network. So basically, uh, depends on the uh, network architecture, uh, the policies has to be set. So similarly, if we go to the the port scanning, uh, usually uh, we don't go for uh, default scanning because uh, some organizations won't allow to perform the scan on all the default ports. Uh, it is like a zero to six double five three five range. Um, so that that is why we just put default so that it will uh, cover only uh, the initial thousand twenty four ports. And the next one is like uh, the local port enumerator, so which is like uh, the default, uh, uh, the basic. Uh, uh, well-known uh, ports such as SSH, SNMP, and WMI, and and few more. Uh, so similarly, we have like network port scanners, where mainly for the um, SYN attacks, and we have SYN, and for UDP um, um, as well. And and similarly for service discovery, uh, mention all the TCP ports where the the services are running. So that is one thing. And we have like uh, the SSL or TLS uh, based scanners as well. And we have next uh, the identity scan for Active Directory, uh, Directory related. So, um, so the next we have like uh, the assessment part. So, uh, so like by default, we do not uh, modify any of the settings unless there is a need for change uh, based on the requirement that is uh, given by the organization when we are performing the scan. So we just we just not uh, we are not touching any of the things. Uh, 
uh, in case if you are performing a web application scan then we need to enable this otherwise if it is just a host scan then no need to make enable that and similarly if you are scanning for a windows machine then we need to enable these things otherwise if it is a linux machine we just have to disable by default and for malware, malware scan by default we can enable it but enabling uh, all the parameters sometimes will increase the duration of the scan so it's again it's based on the need and uh, uh, on what system we are performing the scan if it is a production system or it's a test bit so based on the requirement we need to enable these settings and and the next one will be the reporting um so there's no uh, further modification required in this uh, default settings then we go to the credential scan so in the credential scan we always suggest to enable the credentials so because uh, the credential based scanning will have more weightage uh, when it comes to the output like it it will have more uh, robust output uh, to be displayed so we always suggest to go for uh, uh, um, credential based scanning and it need not be root it can be a, a normal uh, credentials as well or it can be a root as well depends on how we have the access to the system if it is a client environment or if it is an internal environment i'm just uh, setting the defaults here and similarly we can uh, set for windows as well uh, if you are performing a scan for windows otherwise we can just ignore it and then uh, then comes the plugin so when it comes to plugin by default all the plugins will be enabled but we have to make sure that which are uh, plugins are not in use let's say if i'm doing a scan for uh, linux machine and there is no need for uh, having the windows uh, plugins enabled which, I, which we can see here so i'm just disabling it so the same way like we just have to see um, uh, most of the plugins like uh, whichever is uh, we feel it is not relevant for the system in case if you're doing a scan on windows we just have to disable the centos or linux related uh, uh, the plugins and then uh, and then finally uh, save uh, save the scan uh, save the policy so my policy is saved the policy name is test now once the policy is created we'll just go to my scans then um, then create a new scan so in this new scan again uh, it will just show for all the, uh, the default policies that is there so just don't select any of this one um, if you already have created your own scan own uh, policy so in this case i have created my own policy because this is a customized one even though if we select advanced scan here we have modified some of the changes so that is why we just go for uh, um, our user defined customized scan then uh, we come to the uh, Then, then we come to uh, uh, so we just name the scan um, then uh, we just provide the description then we just select the fold the folder and then and then the targets so the targets can be like uh, it can be an ipv ipv4 address or ipv6 address and we, we, if there are multiple ips we can provide the ips as a uh, comma separated in this way or uh, if, if it is a similar say, a range of IP address, then we can provide in this format as well, um, 192.168.1.10, 1.30. Or if there are like n number of different IPs, then it, 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 it cannot be put in the same, in this box, then it can be uploaded as a file. So once this is done, then go to the schedule tab, whether you want to be uh, 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 performing a immediate scan or you want to schedule for the different time. If it is a different time, just enable it and, um, and, and schedule the scan so usually these things will be done when there is a, a production system and if we don't have to impact the traffic or performance of the system then you during the off peak hours we used to set it otherwise if it is not a such critical system then we used to do, go for immediate scan then notification we can uh, just uh, if smtp server is configured then um, then we can set as, uh, keep the email for the recipients to deliver the copy of the report so then we'll say, save the scan and then now uh, the scan is created now we just have to click this uh, play button launch it so once we once we click on launch the scan will be uh, created now we can see it's in on demand status now it is getting getting frozen uh, uh, progress so now uh, we can see the whole vulnerabilities history so once the scan is created um, we can see uh, um, uh, we'll get the report so we'll just uh, wait for a few seconds So we can see uh, the scan is completed and there is another scan also running as well. So we just uh, look at open the report. Um, so let me just go to all scans and then test nases and my scans. And there is uh, one host being scanned currently and there are one vulnerabilities found. And 
plus G. So we'll just uh, open the, the completed scan. So here we can see um, um, the, there are like configure section, a launch section, report section, and export section. So once the scan is completed, um, we'll just uh, open the current scan. Yeah. So we'll just uh, click on the report section. Then uh, we have the um, HTML and CSV. Uh, as I am using the um, uh, the local version of the NASA, so that is why uh, there are some other options which were supposed to be there, which is not visible. Where in the in the uh, professional version, we have an option to uh, expo extract the report in the PDF format as well. Uh, so currently, uh, in this uh, limited version, we are getting only few options. So we can select uh, the, the the detailed summary, and then uh, say save save it then we would be able to uh, generate the report. So once the report is generated, uh, we can see the details in the, so it's always uh, best and we suggest that uh, the report in uh, PDF or format would be better. So I'm just uh, showing some of the uh, the standard report that we, we, we uh, use in our daily work. Um, so yeah, so this is with respect to the, the tool and how to launch the scan and how to generate the report and how to set the policies. Now, when it comes to the scan report, um yeah so this so this is how it looks like and uh, we, we could see that it has some one or nine pages I'd, as it has a lot of findings now if we go a little down uh, and uh, we have like uh, uh vulnerability uh, um, vulnerabilities by host and uh, I, I just masked it uh, masked the server ip and then if there is any complaints failed uh, or anything so that will be seen here if there is any warning or anything so as of now there is nothing as such in the report so then uh, we can see here um, uh, for this uh, ip that we have scanned there are like uh, uh, two critical vulnerabilities and 10 high three medium two low and 51 info related so our, our target mainly will be on high critical medium so it's always the the top three are the critical priorities to uh, focus on so then we can see the the scan information what time the scan was started and what time the scan ended so it is the scan one of the scan report it was done in the august and then uh, we have like a dns name and uh, uh, we have again we master ip and mac addresses and uh, we can see what on which machine this has been done now when it comes to the vulnerability part so we'll just uh, discuss on one or two vulnerabilities so here we can see that it's a red hat expat vulnerability so it means that uh, the version of uh, the expat one uh, uh, command expat uh, a process uh, which is uh, which is a part of linux process so that is running on the machine is vulnerable so it's a, it's a need there is a need for upgrading the version to the new version uh, so we can see the description of the vulnerability and there are some of the CVA references as well listed here and and also there is a reference links also for this is a vulnerability related um, looks like one of the familiar one and then um, we can see the solution as well update the affected I expect expect level and expect static packages it clearly saying it and there is a risk factor as well it says high then we have a common vulnerability scoring system uh, CVSS 3.0 calculator has assigned the base score as 8, 9.8 and temporal score as 8.8 and we can see the corresponding vectors like attack vector is a network, it's a network type attack and attack complexity is low and privileges required is none, there is no need of privileges to do this attack and user interaction also not required and the scope is also unchanged and the confidential is very high and critical uh, in integrity is very high, availability is also very high so it means that uh, there is a full loss of full disk uh, loss of information being disclosed and the uh, uh, attacker is able to modify the files so that's why integrity is high and he can be used he was able to bring down the system as well so that is why availability also high so that is why the score, the score stands at 9.8 and it's a, it is a critical uh, vulnerability list so similarly uh, we have like a cvss 2.0 score as well and we have the some of the cv references which is matching this vulnerability and we have common weakness exploit as well uh, and then we have plugin information like what uh, when this plugin was published and what and when it was modified so the finally in the plugin output part we can see like uh, what is the package that is installed in the server and what it is supposed to be to make sure that this uh, vulnerability is resolved so this is it, it clearly says that we need to upgrade to the dot 14 version so um, so once we have the report and once we make our analysis for uh, mainly for critical high medium vulnerabilities so we need to make sure that 
we need to check with the back end application team whether we can do the upgrade of this uh, particular package or not because there are uh, always um, these uh, things um, dependent on the application that is running on the os so we cannot directly go and do it so it's always need a confirmation from uh, product developers or product um, uh, uh, owners and then we have to plan the uh, change accordingly so similarly um, we have another vulnerability like which is related to python so it's need not like uh, every vulnerability we need to be fixed uh, it's again depends on the criticality of the system and uh, uh, how how critical the vulnerability is um, so based on that we need to um, go for applying the changes uh, so say again like similarly like if you look at any vulnerability we have a description we have a references for the vulnerability we have a solution we have a risk factor how, how risk uh, it is and we have a cvss score and we have um plugin information and plugin output like what pa exact packages to be replaced like in this case we have like python and uh, python lips uh, it has a current version and the new version that has to be uh, updated yeah so this is with respect to uh, nasus vulnerability scanner so in the next video, we will be discussing on uh, NASA's compliance uh, security audit. So how to do that. So thank you guys. Thanks for watching the video.